Good morning, everybody. Uh, today, we will resume our talk about thumb duplication, and we will speak today about the surgical treatment options, the rationales, and the, uh, the benefits of each type of the uh, surgeries advised and uh, the negatives and side effects of each type. Again, this is me, Dr. Kamal Maruf, an orthopedic surgeon, visiting fellow in microsurgery and hand department with Dr. Bur uh, Professor Dr. Boland and Dr. Berkan in Ghazi Osman Basha, Istanbul, Turkey. The goals of surgical treatment are to improve both function and appearance. The parents and the patient, mostly the parents, and the doctor should have realistic expectations, which is a stable and mobile thumb of appropriate size and shape. But that doesn't mean ever that it will be as normal as the other side or as in other children. It always will be different. Uh, timing of surgery, most authorities nowadays uh, agree on doing the surgery before the prehensile function of thumb develops. Uh, which, is, which, which occurs between age two to three years. Uh, some of the surgeons prefer to do it before one year of age at eight months to nine months, where the remodeling potential and recovery of the soft tissue and reconstructed, reconstructed surfaces of the joints are much more uh, high and the uh, future consequences are much well adopted to. And some other surgeons prefer to postpone it a little bit further until the age of two to three years where the structures are more mature and easily identifiable, but that will be on the expense of loss of some of the remodeling and adaptability and some uh, increased periods of physiotherapy and rehabilitation. Uh, so to summarize the surgical options, it's one of four. It's either no surgery at all, which is usually in subtle types one and two, and as we said earlier in our previous seminar, most, most of the time the thumb duplication represents a cosmetic problem rather than a functional problem. Excision of the floating thumb, which is called, uh, or the so-called nubbin, uh, which is uh, underreported in literature because many times uh, it, is not, uh, it is done by other people other than orthopedics, hand surgeons, or pediatric uh, surgeons. It's done by a common by GPs or family medicine by simply putting a stitch and letting the nubbin go into gangrene and fall down. Uh, ab uh, ablation and reconstruction of the extra digit, which is the most valid option in, in, in many forms that we will uh, clarify more. Uh, ablation alone is not mo no, no more a valid option. Uh, below, uh, with, its, uh, with some special types of the ablation and reconstruction, like below cloquet procedure, on top plasty, ray transfer, uh, etc. In rare instances where both thumbs are non functional, are uh, hypoplastic and unreconstructable, we can sacrifice them and do polycization uh, of the index finger to regain the function. So in, in floating thumbs or nubbins, if the skin bridge is less than four millimeter in the, uh, between the nubbin and the uh, root of the thumb, we can excise it in the neonatal period uh, by simply putting a stitch around it and letting it fall into gangrene or by cutting it with, the, with a blade. But usually they, developed, uh, they develop a painful stump or a neuroma. And the histopathological studies of this remaining nubbin uh, usually showed a neurological tissue uh, that is responsible for unpleasant pain. If the skin bridge is more than four millimeters, formal excision and suture under general anesthesia is postponed until the age of three months of age. Ablation and reconstruction. As we know, we have many elements of the thumb, uh, so we need to address each one very carefully as it will affect the final result. The skin incision should be carefully planned with a zigzag dorsal incision, which is the preferred by the, the vast majority of the surgeons, or whether it was an S shape or uh, uh, any type of reconstructive uh, uh, planned incision. 
uh, it should keep in mind to leave some uh, of the skin of the excised thumb to be used as a flap to cover the defect on the remaining thumb. The underlying uh, soft tissue is, is preserved as much as possible, especially the neurovascular bundles and uh, the ligament, ligaments and tendons. Uh, we have two major joints, the interphalangeal joint and the metacarpophalangeal joint. The metacarpophalangeal joint stability has proven by research uh, and to be the more important uh, subjective to the, subjectively by the patients uh, more than the IP joint instability. So we need to pay special attention to the ulnar collateral ligament reconstruction. And in cases of sacrifice of the radial, uh, of the less commonly radial digit, uh, the radial collateral ligament should be reconstructed or the uh, whole of the collateral, complex lateral collateral ligament. Um, uh, usually, uh, it, ha it has an element of laxity, and the usual sacrificed thumb is the ulnar one. That's why the ulnar collateral ligament is very important. Most of the studies indicate the variant degrees of uh, opening to ulnar stress of the ulnar of the metacarpophalangeal joint, which ranges in some studies from zero to twenty. In others, it was uh, classified to be satisfactory if it was 20 to 30 degrees. And in a more recent review, it was uh, by Engelhardt, it was shown to be even up to 40 degrees acceptable uh, uh, when compared to other side, normal side, or when compared to healthy children, which may, may have up to 30 degrees of lateral opening of the jo MCP joint with stress. So, he advised to look at the 40 degrees as a cutting off point, not the 20, not the 30, and look at the function of the thumb with the MCP joint in the grip rather than taking absolute numbers as zero or 20 for uh, uh, evaluating of the metacarpophalangeal joint. The pictures here showed uh, uh, how the soft tissue should be reconstructed around the metacarpophalangeal joint. Uh, in the uh, lateral on the lateral radial side, and then how the uh, thinners and abductors uh, of the thumb are uh, attached back over this soft tissue to regain stability and regain function of the MCP joint. The U ligament, which is an abnormal connection between the two uh, parts of uh, EPL or uh, uh, and the two thumbs should be sacrificed and or joined. And the pollex abductus, which is an abnormal connection between the FPL and the EPL should be also addressed and disconnected to, re to restore the uh, mechanics of uh, flexor policies and extensor policies long this respectively. As we can see here by the errors with the, with the, no with the abnormal connection between the tendons. The joint surfaces uh, need to be carefully uh, reconstructed. Uh, uh, reconstructed, we don't mean that we go for prosthesis, but for shaping, for taking a wedge out of it, for contouring the head or contouring the base of the metacarpal, uh, of the phalanx over the metacarpal or the phalanx over the other phalanx to, to fit in a stable way. Uh, it's not uh, uh, the, the shelling of the extra digit, which is usually, as we said earlier, chosen as to be the ulnar one, uh, is usually done subperiosteally to remove the uh, bony elements and the joints, uh, sacrificing them and keeping the better intact thumb. If that was not done properly, you will end up with some ulnar deviation or uh, of the thumb, as in this case, which had to be revised later on to show to stabilize the interphalangeal joint from the radial side to get a more straight thumb and a, st a more stable IP joint for the function. Uh, so the uh, and of note that uh, for the patients, IP joint stiffness is is better tolerated. If, uh, if in terms of function and if in terms of cosmesis for the patient, so they they and for their parents, so they apparently tolerate IP joint stiffness to, to a certain degree better than IP joint instability. 
And both of these problems in the IP joint are tolerated better than the MCP joint stiffness or instability. As we see here in this picture presented in Dr. Tonkin's paper, uh, he uh, described the elephant uh, trunk foot uh, sign that uh, shows a multidirectional instability in the MCP head. And here, this needs to give us a warning sign that we need to work more on the soft tissue elements and restoring the joint stability into the MCP joint. And this is a form advised of osteotomy advised by him when he, did, when he tried in type two, joining the distal phalanx together in, uh, to form one distal phalanx. Uh, it was not closing uh, symmetrically proximal and distal. So he went and excised a wedge from uh, the uh, proximal phalanx head and then it joined uh, the distal phalanx joint back easily. So this is one form of performing the osteotomy and uh, facilitating a reconstruction. Uh, the tendons, as we said, should be centralized as in this picture uh, from their aberrant ex eccentric position into the central position of the thumb or in a new technique that would, was advised by Dr. Wang Zigang and his, uh, in his paper, uh, where he rerouted the FPL from the excised thumb and reinserted it into the IPA distal phalanx to, to aid in the stability and centralization or, uh, uh, when action happens over the interphalangeal joints. He, uh, he took it from the uh, uh, radial side and put it into the ulnar side through uh, a, pulver, a, sem a pulver taft like uh, uh, in incision through the main tendon and it aided in maintaining the stability and uh, function of the joint. In more proximal types five, six or seven reconstruction, more soft tissue is needed and more uh, elements should be addressed like, uh, as we said earlier, like the tendons with the FPL reconstruction. The polys might play a very important role to be reconstructed using, as, Dr. as in this paper, Dr. Engelhardt advised a, a slip of the aberrant uh, APL to be used to reconstruct the poly of the, uh, over the uh, uh, lateral side of the, uh, uh, sorry, to reinforce the uh, uh, complex lateral collateral uh, side of the thumb to prevent its laxity. Uh, it can be also used to, uh, to reconstruct the poly. It was advised also to, uh, to advance the volar plate over the metacarpal head to aid in the stability of the tendon and the joint. So these are all options that remain to be addressed and individualized in each case uh, accordingly to stabilize the function of the thumb. And as we saw in most pictures, a K wire temporarily is uh, very beneficial uh, to maintain these structures until healing and maintain this, uh, the, uh, the, the posture of the thumb. <clears throat> the on top plasty or ray transfer is combining the best element of each of the thumbs. The, if it was on the interphalangeal level, it would be called on top plasty. If it was on the metacarpophalangeal level, it will be called ray transfer. So we combine the distal element of the good one over the proximal elements of the good one, of the uh, other good one, and end up with one uh, thumb. This is a special form of reconstruction uh, where you combine all the elements of uh, uh, each of the thumbs. It was uh, uh, originally taken from Dr. Uh, Billot and Clockett's technique, but it is not included in their technique. It's much different. Billot Clockett procedure is a combining procedure also. It combines both uh, uh, thumbs. It was originally described for type one only but it, the, the indications has been extended by many authorities to type two, to type three, and even some of them did, did it for types four. Uh, it, has, uh, it has the strict prerequisite of having symmetric thumbs, equal thumbs, well developed in, in, at the level of the nail uh, and nail pulp and bones. 
Uh, it is very useful, especially when the nail width is less than two thirds of the normal side in unilateral cases or less than the index finger in cases of bilateral uh, thumb duplication. It must retain elements of both thumbs, including the nail, the pulp, and the bone. This is what makes it different from the ray transfer or on top plastic. Uh, there is an advised modified extra articular technique where the epiphysis is preserved. But the problem with billot clocket is that it is technically challenging and often associated with poor reported outcomes in terms of cosmesis or sometimes growth disturbances. Sometimes it might be, as in this paper, combined with a special osteotomy called filate osteotomy uh, with, the with the nail and pulp and uh, distal osteotomy to combine both uh, elements in a very beautiful way uh, or a more prettier way. <clears throat> Triphalangeal thumbs represent a special entity. They are usually uh, more difficult to be treated, but luckily many of them don't require uh, surgery and they are functionally acceptable and uh, cosmetically acceptable by some of the patients. In triphalangeal thumb, the special problem is having an extra joint, which uh, cannot be simply just excise the middle phalanx and throw it away and get, join the uh, distal interphalangeal joint or the proximal interphalangeal joint. Usually we go for removal of part of the uh, middle phalanx, proximal phalanx or distal phalanx with middle phalanx and arthrodesis of the extra joint uh, to maintain the function and shorten the thumb. Uh, polycization, as we said, uh, as described here in, in, a, in a case of ulna dimelia, where, which is a variant in, of the thumb duplication group. Here we have the patient we started with seven digits, but three, the three thumbs were uh, functionally un unreconstructable and uh, useless. So they were sacrificed and the index was polycized to gain a proper function for the hand. And as you can see, it was uh, reported as successful in the few uh, on follow-up. Postoperatively, a long um, thumb spica cast uh, should be removed along with the K-wires after four to five weeks at least. And then some form of protection in a removable short arm thumb spica should be used for additional four to eight weeks. And usually physiotherapy is not needed in a pediatric uh, group. Uh, in older children, sometimes minor physiotherapy and adjustment should, uh, in addition to daily life activities, is needed. The prognosis depends on many aspects. The balanced, the so-called balanced versus imbalanced thumbs, where the balanced thumbs are well developed and uh, equal in size and parallel, while the imbalance, uh, they usually end up with a good result, while the imbalance, which end up in a zigzag deformity with the congruence, uh, con convergence, divergence, end up in poor results, whatever you do. Uh, Metacarpophalangeal joint stability, as we said, is a main concern. It was neglected in the early cases uh, of just uh, excision of or ablation of the extra thumb and now more attention is paid to reconstruction of it. So uh, it depends very highly on the surgical technique of reconstruction. Preoperative absence of an IP joint flexion crease is a poor prognostic factor for the IP joint uh, mobility on reconstruction because it, it indicates that this joint has never been flexed before and it will be difficult to gain some range of motion in it, whatever you do, as we see in this picture in this radial thumb. So here, in this case, radial thumb should be sacrificed, which is less common than sacrificing the ulnar thumb. The active range of motion, the stability, the alignment, and the strength of all of the uh, joints of the thumb are likely to be limited postoperatively, so they should be very carefully evaluated preoperatively to know what to expect in the future. The surgical technique have been shown to be of paramount importance in the end result as one tiny detail that, that has been changed in, the, in, in between different types of surgeries 
had a huge impact on the outcome of the surgery. For, for example, in tendon repairs, when going with just simple centralization or with a rerouting or with a stitch uh, lateralization, all of them differ in the end result uh, as evaluated by different studies. <clears throat> the complications include instability of the joints, as we said earlier, which stiffness of the joints, power reduction, split nail uh, or groove deformities, which are rather cosmetic problems, thick diameter of the reconstructive the thumb, especially when using uh, clocket, below clocket technique, where uh, uh, grow, further growth in the future may make the thumb thicker, and it is difficult to control the elements when you cut them initially. Uh, growth disturbances are also observed when, uh, when epiphysis is involved. Clinodactyly has been reported, and even necrosis of the reconstructed thumb and loss of the thumb has been reported. So surgical technique, uh, meticulous uh, handling of soft tissue and neurovascular bundles should be uh, done during the surgery. A take-home message is well said by uh, the, uh, the opening of Dr. Michael Tonkin's uh, article. Uh, it summarized the condition where it is a radial ulnar axis uh, deformity of the hand plate and the Wassel uh, classification is the most widely used way to communicate uh, despite its deficiencies. And the aim of surgical reconstruction should be always to obtain a stable mobile thumb of adequate size and appropriate shape. And the most common form of reconstruction is removal of lesser digit and reconstruction of the dominant digit. But we have the complicated problems of triphalangism, triplication, ulnar dimelia, and, uh, and the rarer circumstances in which neither of the duplicated thumbs may be adequately reconstructed. They uh, present specific challenges which demand alternative techniques. Thank you for your attention. Hope to see you in future seminars. And these are the references again of the people who worked for all the past years to make this knowledge possible for everybody. Thanks for them.